in in a sec once we get uh, onto the Facebook. So uh, so ahead of the game, ready to go. <laughs> Perfect. I think we are all online and ready to go. <laughs> awesome. All right. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Megan Williamson with Ocean Rehab and Fitness. For those of you that don't know me, many of you do. Welcome back. Um, this week, we're going to be focusing on rowing and rotating our trunk. And we're also going to warm up with a little bit of breath work as well. Okay. Hi, Janice. <laughs> um, I hope everybody has been out and enjoying the weather. It is a little bit warm so just make sure as always you have like a water bottle next to you um, if you get overheated it's sometimes helpful to have a cool towel um, or even if some people like to use a spray bottle whatever it is that you have and I'll just go over the equipment today uh, so I don't have one to demonstrate with right now but for our regular release work that we do in this class if you want to have a small ball like a tennis ball works really well or a lacrosse ball, feel free. I'm gonna demonstrate with my hands today, my fingers, so you don't need to have a ball. You can just do what I'm doing. Um, I have two bands with me today. Um, essentially, we only need one at a time, so don't worry about having two, but if you have more than one resistance, I recommend getting uh, a lighter one, and then uh, preferably a bit of a heavier one. So uh, if you're in the Ocean Insider Club, um, or you're with the Adaptive PT program, you should have gotten one of these blue ones um, as one of the heavier bands. So if you have one of those, bring it out. Otherwise, uh, definitely a light one. If you don't have any bands and you're just working with stuff from your, from your house, uh, yoga pants work really well or any type of stretchy tight. Uh, those can work really well for some of the exercises that we're doing. Um, if you have um, any grip, compromised grip, it wouldn't be a bad idea while I'm talking right now to just um, have your bands like looped at the end or have a loop on the ends and that can also help you um, get through some of these exercises. Otherwise, I will be showing um, variations of what you can do if you don't have the strongest grip. Okay, so band or two and then some type of ball or something that you can hold. Um, I'm just using a massage ball, but this can be like a bender ball. Some of us have those light blow up bender balls. Uh, I'm not going to say a lacrosse ball or a golf ball or anything like that. That's too small. So something like no smaller than this. It can even be a water bottle. I would pre prefer it to be a little bit uh, bigger in that sense. Um, and if it's a water bottle, you would just hold it at the ends. Okay. It can be empty. It can be filled with water if you want more of a challenge. Um, something like this. A basketball would be fine. It can be a lighter ball uh, and a bigger ball. That's fine too. We just don't want it to be too, too heavy. Um, and actually, Janice reminded me she uses her dumbbells. So you can also use um, dumbbells, but just make sure they don't go over two pounds for this. Okay. So ball. And then last but not least, we're going to be using is a dowel. So something that is wider than your shoulders. It shouldn't be really, really uh, uh, like small. We want to have it qu quite long. Uh, light, so not, not those weighted body bars. And then this can also be like a broomstick. It can be a dead hockey stick. It can be um, a, a dragon boat paddle, which some of us have in here. Okay, anything like that. And that is it for the equipment today. So just a friendly reminder for those of you that don't come often, there is a chat box and I will answer questions as soon as I can when we're done movement. So feel free to write anything in there. If you're on Facebook and you're streaming this right now, feel free to uh, write in the chat and Sasha will give me the, the message as soon as she sees it. And if you just have any comments, you can do that as well. Okay, so let's get started. If you want to have your um, your back sitting up away from your chair, so if you find that you have like a dump in your chair and it creates this posture, for this breathing, it might be really nice to get something. Um, this is too big for anybody watching, but if I was like on my couch, I could put my roller here and sit back and it would allow me to stay nice and tall instead of sinking into the couch. So you could grab like a rolled up towel, a chip foam block, something like that. Just grab that and get yourself situated nice and tall. If you don't need the backrest of your chair, I do invite you to come and sit nice and tall on your sit bones and draw that chin slightly down so that we can get a nice long back of the neck. 
Okay, so here we go. So we're gonna start with our breathing. We're gonna actually, if you're comfortable, you can close your eyes, okay, and I'll do it with you. And I just want you to notice your breath. We're not gonna do anything yet with um, separating anything or getting into any details. We're gonna work our way there. So just closing your eyes and there's no, there's no wrong or right way to do this. I just want you to notice the pace of your breathing. So I'm gonna count about eight cycles for myself and you can just do this at your own time. Okay, and like I said, there's no wrong or right. We're not, we're not belly breathing. We're not doing anything like that. We're just breathing. I just want you to notice the, the rhythm. You can keep your eyes open if that's better. Otherwise, you're just focusing internally, getting into your body. Okay, and once you've done about eight, you can now place your hands on your stomach or just one hand, okay? And now what we're gonna do is focus on expanding in the abdominal. So we wanna expand in the low belly. We wanna try and avoid this rise and fall of the chest. So what you should feel with your hands here is when you take your big inhale, you should feel your belly expand and then exhale, just let it go. Okay, once again, if you wanna shut your eyes to get into your body, that's fine. Okay, otherwise, just looking at the monitor. Okay, here we go, I'll shut mine. And we're gonna do eight here. Inhale, belly expands. Exhale, belly falls. This is easier to do with a tall posture. Okay, just three more. At your own tempo. Okay, and one more here. Good, and then we're gonna slowly open our eyes. So what we should have felt is work coming in here. So expansion and not a whole lot happening up in here. This isn't the easiest to do. If you've been taking my class every week, we've been working on this, which is why I skipped the, the chest breathing. Um, if this is new to you and you're like, wow, that was really hard or I'm, I wanna try that again with more time, I do invite you to try this in bed when you're lying on your back because it is actually a little bit easier to do, okay? So I'll let you guys take that and now we're gonna start with some release work. So if you have your ball, that's great. Otherwise, hand and we're just gonna get right into the pecs here. We're gonna get into pecs and neck and activate lats today because we're doing a lot of pulling, okay? so. Getting right into these muscles here. There's no wrong way to do this. Just go where it feels maybe tender or feels maybe kind of good. And we're just kind of, I'm just doing like tiny little circle massages and I'm working right into the muscle there and right into the fascia layers. So we're trying to just get some nice fluidity between all those layers. Sometimes if we haven't been moving a lot or we've been sitting in one position for a long time, or maybe you did a really hard workout and did a lot of pushing or a wheel. Sometimes these can get kind of stuck, all these layers of connective tissue and they can get cause us to be a bit rigid. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're just trying to get a little bit of separation so we can get a little bit more movement in our workout, which is gonna help you get more benefit from the workout longer and not just right as soon as we're done moving. Okay, and then as you can see, I'm kind of taking my hand up now into my anterior shoulder. So if some of you have had like shoulder stuff going on, you might want to just do the whole like the whole side of the shoulder. So like I know Marn, it might feel good for you to take your hand into the back and around. 
Okay, uh, Barbara, this might benefit you as well, given what ha um, just your little shoulder injury you had a little while ago. Um, otherwise, just staying here in the front might be do might be enough for most people. Okay, and then we're gonna work our way up into the traps once you're done that. So an option is to hold your elbow with your other hand. You don't have to. Um, I do like this though for support. Okay, and we're just getting right into those neck muscles, trying to find where it's feeling tender, maybe tight, maybe like a guitar string. Sitting up as tall as you can. Imagine that your head is right on top of your spine, so we don't want to hang it forward at all. So we're not here, right? Get that chin back. And then we're going to slowly release that. Good. And now I want you to take that same side arm. We're going to take it up and over behind your head. And now we're going to take the other hand and we're going to do some activation slaps all up and down the lat muscle. So start right up at the armpit here and I'm trying to reach around my back and I'm just doing some nice easy activation slaps right along the side of my body. Okay, I see a few new names coming in and they're people I don't see quite often so just join in we're just warming up uh, equipment today would be a light ball a couple bands if you have them and a dowel good okay and then shake it out just test your neck see do you feel a difference in the length on the side that you just kind of worked out to the other side maybe you don't and that's okay but just see if you feel any difference there. And now we're gonna go to the other side. So this arm is resting down. Okay, nice massaging. Getting right into those muscles. There's no wrong way to do this, but there is a more effective way to do this. So really make sure that you're getting into the spaces that feel the most sensitive or maybe they aren't moving as much. So there might be spots of the skin that's able to like just glide really easily and other spots not so much and that's kind of where we want to be. Okay. And awesome. And now you're going to make your way for those of you that want to come into the anterior shoulder. Great. Otherwise, we can start taking your hand around and you can just start working the entire shoulder. Make sure when you do this, though, that you're not tensing up this arm. We want to just keep it really relaxed. And that's sometimes a hard thing to do, especially if we're stabilizing. So feel free to um, sit back a little bit, stay as tall as you can if you need to, to support your trunk as much as you, you need to for this so that we don't tense up that arm. Okay, I didn't mention chest straps either. If any of you have chest straps, feel free to use those in this class too, if you need it. Okay, and then we're coming up into that trap. So I'm supporting my elbow and I'm just getting right up into those neck muscles. Ooh, I feel these today. Okay, rolling right in there, getting into those tight spots. Uh, it might feel different than the other side in terms of where you wanna be working with those hands and that's okay. Just take, just take notice if they're uneven, if they're even, if they're completely different, just take notice. There's no right or wrong. We're all working with different things. Okay. Finishing that up, then you're going to take that hand, bring it up and over your head, lock it to the back of your neck or your ear, something like that. And then we're going to do those nice big activation slaps all the way up and down your side body. Remember, you're trying to reach your hand to the back. So we're trying to get all the way as far back as we can. And slowly ending that, good. Okay, now we can start some movements. So we're gonna go right into our shoulder rolls. One and two. And seven, good. And 10, and now reverse it. 
feel free in these classes. Some of you have told me that you play your music in the back, and that's awesome. Uh, some of you want that, go for it. It's always a good idea. Keep us a little bit more motivated, a little bit more energy. And then no one can judge you on what songs you listen to. <laughs> and good. And then we're going to bring the arms straight out to the sides, hands, fingertips nice and spread if you can. And then nice big hug. Sometimes that's the hardest part is finding music for um, my groups that uh, will make everyone happy. <laughs> and for those of you that go to park, I'm sure you understand all the different types of music that gets played and a lot of times it can't please everybody. <laughs> and over, nice. So the beauty of working out at home, you get to play whatever you want. And cross, awesome. Okay, last two here. The fingertips are an important part, so make sure that you, if you're able to, you're really stretching those fingertips. Last one. Okay, and now we're gonna do a ha half head roll. So it's like you're you're gonna do a half circle with your nose and half circle with your nose. And three. And five. And six. And seven, good, last one here. And now we're gonna go straight up. So up, bottom jaw on the top, bring it back to center, grab something with your chin, tuck, and then center. And then we do that again, up, and center, and tuck, and center. And again, up, and tuck, up, and tuck. Okay, two more here. One. And again. Last one. And now we're going to go into our side. So you're going to think of staying tall. Arms can just hang at your sides. And you're just going to do a little tip over to the side. If you are able to feel your butt, you don't want your butt to come off the floor or off your chair. So we don't want to be here. It's just a little tip, taking yourself off balance, and then come back. Other side, and then come back. If you have full trunk, you might be able to go a little bit further. However, you don't want your hips to come off. So that's the trade-off. You should feel even amount of weight in your butt muscles the whole time. Okay? Right and left. If you have a chest strap on right now, you might want to loosen it a little bit for this. Good. Arms are at your sides. Okay, here we go. This is four. And three. Two. And one. And awesome. And there's a comment here. Half circle head move seems to cause vertigo when I do them anyway. I can avoid doing that. Um, Nicole, are you closing your eyes? Try what you're not, if you're closing your eyes, try keeping your eyes open when you do it. Um, so her, sorry for people that can't see her question. Um, she said that when she does the half circle, her, she gets a little bit of vertigo. So I would just say try opening. Okay, so try closing your eyes, see if that makes a difference. And if that doesn't make a difference, then I would make it a bit more um, static. And maybe you can just do side to side, and then after, you can take the up and down. So you would just separate it instead of doing the full circle. So those are two options that you can try and see if that helps, okay? Awesome, all right, you're gonna grab your dowel. And, oops. Okay, so grab your dowel. We are gonna take that now and take the arms up overhead. So we're gonna come up and then 10, basic here, and then after that, those same tips we just did here, you're gonna do with your arms over your head. So after 10, we're gonna tip, and we're gonna tip. And the goal is to keep the dowel above your head. I don't wanna see it creeping down this way, okay? Here we go, so supersetting the two together. Three, two, we're still in warm up, everybody. And up, 
getting a nice big shoulder range of motion, keeping the chin tucked. We don't want to look at the dowel with our eyes. We don't need to look up. We're just looking straight ahead, most likely at the monitor. Okay, 10 here. And now we're going to, sorry, tip. It's giving away the next part. And tip. And then come on down, and that's one. Good. Come on up, and we're going to tip. We're doing 10 of these. Tip. And again, coming up. Tip. And tip. And coming down. Four. 10 is the goal. If it's too much for you, that's okay. Just do what you can. Breathing. Eyes forward, not looking up. Last three. And two. Last one here. And excellent, good. Okay, now we're gonna do a rotation. We're not doing that again, don't worry. So we're rotating with our dowels. We're gonna keep the dowel. Arms don't have to be completely straight. If that's too much for your balance, um, we can have the elbows bent slightly. Okay, so I'll let you decide. The goal is to only move through the trunk. So it's as if your belly button had a string and it was attached to the dowel. You're gonna move with the belly button as far as you can. So I shouldn't be seeing this, right? See how my belly button is nowhere near the dowel? And I shouldn't be seeing, if you look at my hips, I shouldn't be seeing this, like this. I call these wiggle parties, okay? So no wiggle parties. Hips are square. If you have something you wanna put between your knees, like you could band your knees or put a block there, that would help. And it's only a small rotation through the abdominals. Okay, we're here or we're here, so keep going. We're gonna be doing 20 of these, 10 each side. <sighs> Exhale on the rotation. <sighs> and six, good. Warming up that rotation nice. Last set here, and relax, good. Okay, dowel aside, grab your lightest band, okay? We're still in warm up, believe it or not, but we're gonna get into a little bit of some of strength for the, sh for the shoulders and the rotator cuff, okay? So we're gonna do an external shoulder rotation with both hands, so the lighter band if possible. Elbows are in at your ribs, we're nice and tall. Thumbs are up, and it's like we're hitchhiking, or sorry, palms are up and we're hitchhiking our thumbs outwards, and we're gonna think of squeezing the shoulder blade so much that the band is gonna break in half. Two, okay, so the back body is working here, and let's go for 10. Eight, Nine, excellent, and that's 10, and awesome. Okay, now you're gonna flip the band, palms forward, sorry, palms down, shoulders away from your ears, have a little wider grip with the band, and this is where if you have some grip stuff going on, you could do it like this, just make sure you have enough space, and now we're gonna break the band, this is a pull apart, and then back to where you started. So if you look at me from the side, my pull apart, my arms start here, and then I'm gonna bring the band all the way to my chest and then back. Maybe you can't see that. There, all the way to the chest and back, okay? For 10, here we go. Three, two, and one. Open. Nice. Two, 
two more. And 10, and then take a little rest on that. Good. Okay, band aside, we are going to do those again, but we're going to go into our hinge because we will be revisiting this in a minute. So we're going to sit tall. You can take one leg out. So you can actually like physically take it out, prop it out on your footrest, or you're going to place your leg straight. Okay, and I'm going to be sitting up as tall as I can. Option one for people that have full trunk and they have a hip hinge, you're going to have your arms up above your head. Option two for people that don't have full trunk and they need some support, you're going to do it with the dowel pushing into your chest. Okay, so it looks like this. Option three is where we need a little bit more support than that. And you're going to keep a nice long spine and walk your hands down. And then you can walk your hands back up. So we have three versions, okay? Here we go. Three, two, and one. I'll show a little bit of each. Okay, we're doing 10 of these. And we're only visiting this exercise once. So this is your one set today. Okay, and then I'll show with this. So for other people, we're hinging. And it's only as big of a hinge as you can do while keeping your spine long. If we start to round in the spine, then we've gone too far. Okay, and then I'll show the last version. Hands up, reaching out and away. For 10, everybody. Uh, I have one more. Keep going if you need to. All we're going to do is switch sides. Awesome. Good. And then I'm going to switch my sides. So now I'm taking this leg out and I'll show all of the versions again. Okay, here we go. Other side, I'll start with this one, reaching out and away. Nice long back, nice and long in that spine. Okay, and my eyes are just following my body. So if my chest starts to go towards the floor, my eyes start to go floor, towards the floor. Okay, and then last few here. Tip, and I'm just showing each variation so that everybody can have a chance to follow along if they're not quite clear on what they're doing. Or maybe they want to switch versions. Okay, and then the last one. Three more here. This one's walking your hands up. And walking your hands down. Last time. So we're warming up the hinge here. Posterior chain. Good. Awesome. Okay. So we are done with that, but we are going to do the two banded exercises one more time. So grab a sip of water, and then we're going to grab your light band again, and we're going right back into external shoulder rotation for 10, and then the pull-aparts for 10. Okay, starting in 10 seconds. Reminder to all of those on the site, on the Ocean Insider Club site, um, we have all of these exercises on there. And we've currently just added about 25 new lower body strength and stretch and proprioception exercises. So check those out. If you are in the adaptive PT program or maybe you are an, an actual subscriber, um, really exciting. Natalia has been putting a lot of work into it and there's a lot of new stuff on there. So make sure you check it out. All right, here we go. Elbows in, palms up, and we are hitchhiking, breaking that band for 10. Eight. Keep that chin slightly tucked. And then we're going to flip. So bring the hands a little wider on the band, shoulders away from those ears, sitting up as tall as we can, and we're going to pull apart. Remember, both of these exercises are focusing on the back body. So we're really getting focused in between those shoulder blades. That's where the most of the work should be felt. As tall as you can. And this is 10. And then you are done with that. Awesome. Okay, new circuit. This time we're going to do three in a row. So I'm going to switch bands. We're doing a row. So I am going to use my heavier band. So 
usually rows are heavier. Um, they're a bigger muscle group than what we just did with the shoulder stabilizers. So if you have the option of a heavier band, grab it. Um, if you're just starting out or maybe you haven't trained in a few weeks, you can stick with the light band, whatever you want to do. Okay. And this one, we're going to be hooking down around the bottom of our feet. So I will take this down. I'm literally just going to step on the band like so. Okay. Otherwise, for those of you that don't have the ability to do that, you can hook it below your chair on your footrests. That usually works well, or the fronts of your wheels. Okay. And then we're going to find something. I didn't tell you to get this at the beginning, um, but if you have some type of pillow or roll up towel that you can place on your tummy to come forward so that we can keep that nice long spine. If you did this full hinge practice with the arms up, you don't need anything here probably. You can just hold and keep a long spine and come in with the row, okay? So I'll give everybody a little second to set that up. We're gonna do 10, only 10 rows today, um, bending forward. Okay, so this is a bent over row. Here we go. So coming forward, nice tip. I'm looking down at the floor and I'm driving those elbows up as I row. Two. Squeezing the back body, feeling those shoulder blades gliding. And that's 10. Awesome. Good. Okay. You can actually just keep the band down there for today. You're going to grab the ball. So whatever ball you have. Okay. And we're going to do a little bit of a movement pattern here called a wood chop. Okay. So we're going to be chopping. So when you chop wood, it's like you're chopping across. Okay. So we're going to be doing that with the ball. And what you're going to do is take it up to the ear. So it's like right above my ear. And then you're going to aim for the rim of your chair or your hip. So we're here, and then we chop back up. Chop back up. So it's like you're throwing something. Okay? Hips are still. Feet stay flat on the foot plate of the floor. Only that chop happening. Okay? Ten on one side, and then we're going to switch. Here we go. Three, two, and one. Breathing. And that's 10, okay? Other side. So now we're going to go other side, other side. Three, two, and one. Chop. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good. So watch when you're doing that. We don't want to fall forward, right? We have to stay nice and tall. So if you're finding that you're falling forward, I would maybe have a little more bend in your elbows and keep the ball a little closer to you. Or you use your chest strap. Okay? Third one is a... Well, we call these paint shakers. I'm actually going to time us today. I was going to count, but we're all going to be at different counts. So 20 seconds only. I say only, but it's tough. And you're going to pretend like your ball is filled with paint. Okay, so shoulders down, sitting tall, and you're going to shake, shake it and get the paint out without falling forward. Okay, here we go. Three two, one, and go. 20 seconds. Breathing. Shake, 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 shake. Five seconds left. Staying tall. Breathing. Three, two, and time. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to time you for 30 seconds. This is your break. And then we're doing all three of that again. So our bent over band row, wood chops both sides, and then paint shakers. You 
You still have 15 seconds before we start. Now's the time to switch your band resistance if you feel like you need to. Otherwise, if it feels fine, you can just leave it. Okay, here we go. That was our time. Okay, so we are we have the band under our feet, okay, and or under your foot plate. Something to support you here if you need help in your hinge and keeping this this back nice and long. Okay, you're gonna grab the band. Here we go in three, two, one. Last two, squeezing those shoulder blades and excellent, leave the band down there because we're coming back. So grab your ball or your whatever you're using. Wood chop, okay? So I challenge you to start on the opposite side of what you just started on. So the side you ended with on the last round. Here we go for 10, three, two, and one. And 10, okay? Other side, make sure you're not holding your breath. Keep moving. And three, two, and one. Eight. This is nine. And 10. Awesome. Okay, 20 seconds. Even if you, if you tuck her out before the 20, do your best, okay? Here we go. Three, 20 seconds, pain shakers. Two and one. <sighs> Breathing. Shake that paint up. Try and get your arms as far out as you can without falling forward. Five seconds left. You're doing great. Two and time. Good. Okay, we're doing another 30 second rest and then we have one more round of these three together before we move on, okay? Questions, comments are all welcome. Now's your chance to ask me things. <clears throat> Everybody is still here, that's a great sign. All right, and that was enough time. Here we go. So your, your band should already be down there under your foot plates or under your feet. Pillow or something to support. Get nice and long. Okay, remember with this one, we're working the back. We're not working the neck. So we should be keeping our eyes down and at the floor. We don't want to be craning our neck up like this, okay? All right, here we go. Three, two, and then we're rowing for 10. Thanks, Janice, glad you're here. Two, and three. Nine, and this is 10. And then we are done with the band down there, so you can take it off. Grab your ball. We are almost through this circuit. Here we go. Three. Pick any side you want to start with. Two and one. Nine and ten. Ten second recovery. Other side. If I'm going too fast, remember, you can always slow it down. Don't worry. I'm just guiding you. You can also review these uh, videos later because they do get posted. Three, two, one. Eight. This is nine and ten. 
Get ready for your last timed paint shaker. Here we go. Three, two, one. <sighs> Breathing. Shake that paint up. Getting taller, heavy hips, long through the back of the neck. Breathing. You have five seconds left. Two and time. Awesome. Good, everybody. Okay, set the stuff aside, not away. And we're going to go into our next couple exercises. Um, we're going to start with a band. I'm only showing with my blue band because it's longer. I would probably just pick your lighter band for this. We're going to be doing some hip abductors. Okay, so we're going to come down. I'm going to tie the band. Well, I, as you know, I don't tie because I want to save time, but I will kind of tie and then hold. Okay, and we're going to do some band abductions. If you don't have the strength to do this, I would recommend um, just using nothing and doing the abductions on your own. Or if you find that you have a lot of spasticity in here, you can even put um, something here and you can let something go and then try and pick it up again. The other option is to assist with your hands like so. So even if you don't have any activation or maybe we don't work our hips, you can take this as a nice stretch. So you can use your upper arms or you can come forward into your hinge and you can use your arms to get a nice big stretch for your inner thighs and just make it active so you're doing it the whole time. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the al alternative option for those, of, for those of you in here that, um, I think there's a couple of you that might not benefit from using a band on this. Okay, so lots of options. Okay, sitting tall regardless of whether you are using a band or not, everybody should be thinking tall and long trunk. Even if we're here doing the assisted with the arms, you still, it's that same hinge we warmed up, okay? Here we go. I guess I should show you my legs. Three, two, and we're here one. And we're gonna do 20 of these. So we're working the outer hips. So these tiny little hip abductors way back here. And the goal is to try and move the legs evenly, right and left. Okay, 20 might be excessive for some of us, so I'm just doing 20 to give time. Maybe eight is good, maybe 10 is good. Okay, I'll let you decide. Three, two, and one and then take a little break, good. Okay, so now that same position we did at the beginning where I had a leg extended. So if you look, I'm gonna like take a leg out. We're gonna hook the band around our foot, okay? And from here, we're gonna do a seated row. So before we did, a, we, this is a horizontal row, before we did a, a row perpendicular to the floor. Okay, so now this is a horizontal row. So we're here, so it's a little bit different. It's gonna target a bit different parts of your, of your back. Okay, so that's what we're doing. I'll just angle this up so we can see what I'm doing. Okay, here we go, 10. It doesn't matter what foot you use. Here we go. and eight, and nine, and that's 10, and relax, good. Okay, everybody together, nice big jack to end and get your heart rate up before we do that circuit again. So arms are gonna go above your head, we're gonna do a nice big clap, everybody, and then we're gonna come down, you're either gonna sl slam your hands to the sides, not too hard, or you can come under and actually clap your hands under your legs. Okay, here we go, 10 as a group. One, I wanna hear that clap. Okay. 
Good. This is six. Keep breathing. And this is 10. Last clap below. And relax. Awesome. Okay. These are our last three exercises. We're going to go right into them. No break. So we're using the band or we're in a nice long spine assisting that stretch. Okay, here we go. Three, two, and one. Opening and close. Good. Make sure you're sitting as tall as you can. Use your backrest on this if you need to. Don't feel like you always have to be sitting up away from the chair. Um, that comment is mostly if you do need a backrest. If you don't need the backrest at all, then just ignore that. I still want you to stay tall. Okay, like I said, I'm doing 20. This just gives us enough time to get you to do as many as you possibly can. 10 to 20 is a really good aim somewhere in there. Okay. And excellent. Good. Okay. Now we're going to put the band on the foot. I'll use my other foot just for fun. Doesn't really matter on this one. So hooking it up, sitting up nice and tall. Here we go. Three, two, and horizontal row. Squeeze those shoulder blades. And seven, and this is eight, nine, keep that breath going, getting nice and tall, and 10, and release that band, good. You are done with the band, you're done with everything, except yourself, we have our high fives. So here we go, last set of 10, I wanna hear the clap at the top, ready? Three, two, and one. Up, clap. Keep that breath going. Almost there. This is eight. And 10, and awesome. Okay, so put your stuff away or aside. We did a, quite a bit of overhead today, so let's do a little bit of a neck stretch to end. I'll set you on a timer, 30 seconds here. So we're gonna sit tall, tuck that chin, and we're gonna look down. And here we go for 30 seconds. Oops, feeling the back of the neck. Three, two, one, and slowly roll it up. Awesome. Okay, everybody, that is what we have time for. That is uh, your rotations and rows today. So I hope you had a good workout. And if you have any questions or comments, I'll be on for just another couple minutes. Um, otherwise, I really look forward to seeing everyone next week. There's a few new names in here. I hope that you had a good workout. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you. Good. Thanks, Linda. Thanks, Nicole. Thank you, Samantha. Nice meeting you. I saw two Gordons in there today. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Thanks for coming.